Welcome to another edition of DXB Today. And as we head towards the end of the year, we're taking inspiration from the recently concluded COP28 to take a bit of a, well, a stock take of the year that was. Looking back at some of our highlights, but also looking forward to next year and the dreaded word of resolutions. Here's what's coming up tonight. Yes, Lane goes down to Al Zahra Hospital to get some insights on how to keep our lungs healthy. Maitha went down to meet Dr. Michael Weber to find out more about deformity corrections. And as we approach the end of the season, we look back at some of our favourite moments on the show. We also have a fabulous performance by Nori right here in the studio. So lots to look forward to. Lots to look forward to indeed. Uh, and of course, the end of the year is just around the corner. So New Year's resolutions is going to be high on our list of things to do. The big question we've got for you is, A, how do you do them? How do you keep to them? And do you do them? Well, questions I'll put to the team first and foremost. Are you a resolution? hundred percent. I am so into personal development. I love my New Year's resolutions. I achieve them. I think I've achieved them pretty much every year. And uh, I say so my... myself. <laughs> <laughs> you're fantastic. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really I, I have my action plan and I'm really good about, you know, making sure I stay on track. I would say, and I know this is going to be a discussion that every, for, for a lot of people every year, it's about being fit and losing weight yeah. and especially all the do you guys put on weight over the holidays? No, mm, Amy. Really. So I have never seen anyone as militant and as as uh, as good about you know your health and fitness as you. I do. I, I do try. Can you give me an insight into what you do for your New Year's resolutions? No. Um, so one year it was that I wanted to uh, start my own business. Okay. And as, as in one year it was about wanting to MC more. One year it was financial, wanting to make more money every month. Okay. Um, this year it's going to be 100% about my fitness because I did have a big operation where I tackled my hernia and my um, ab separation, and that was Steve stopping me, preventing me from becoming more fit. So I have no more excuses. That's going to be my thing. Okay, so. perfect. So you can join me then on a Absolutely not, fitness because January. Because I've seen how you work out. <laughs> I'm a beginner, Amy. I just started doing Zumba, okay? You love a resolution, do you? I do. I do love a resolution. Like usually I keep it like food related. I think this year I'm going to do like Veganuary. So kind of go a little bit cleaner with the eating. Um, yeah, that's generally what I do, but I don't really have anything major. Maybe I need to take a leaf out of your book. And what about you, Tom? Do something a bit more self. Yeah. You're, you're not a resolution kind of guy. I'm going to be the alternative to the two uh, 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 bastions of virtue alongside me at the moment, because, yeah, I'm, I've, I don't know what it is. Beginning of a new year, I just always feel that the last thing I need to do is deny myself something. Maybe a little later on in the year. Let's okay. Wait. Well, while well, we're time. tackling. <laughs> New Year's resolutions. How about we find out? We're, we're going to be talking about this with our guest co-host. So how about we find out who it is first? Hi, I'm Dr. Shafali, and I'm integrative medical doctor here in Dubai, and I'm excited to join you on today's show. Yes, Dr. Shafali will join us right here in just a little bit. But first, Lane went down to Al Zahra Hospital to meet with Dr. Mohammed Fauzi Katranji to get a few simple tips on how you can keep your lungs healthier and to live an overall better lifestyle. So let's take a look. Another fantastic day in Dubai and the weather is fantastic this time of year. But also this time of year, we have to change our lifestyles. So I've come down to the Al Zara Hospital to find out about maintaining a happier and healthier lifestyle. Dr. Mohammed, this is uh, a very busy time of year. A lot more people are coming in to the UAE to enjoy the weather and the events and all the good things happening. But that means a lot of people are getting sick. Uh, so how can we maintain uh, a healthier lifestyle? So uh, a lifestyle, uh, so it's important to kind of be sure that you're protecting yourself. So one of the most important things is really good hygiene. When you're going places, make sure you're washing your hands and uh, avoiding contact with people who might be sick. Uh, lots of times people are traveling in very compact areas and they are exposed to multiple viruses. Dubai is a very international place, so you're exposed to people from Africa, from China, from Europe, from North and South America. So that is really important just to maintain good physical hygiene. 
Uh, things that you should never forget, even though you're on vacation, is to exercise pretty regularly. Just take care of your body, go out for a walk, run. Uh, good, you know, physical health is good respiratory health, no matter what. And, uh, you know, we got to avoid pollution too. So people are smoking, people are um, exposed to maybe dust here that they might not be exposed to before. So be aware of what, you know, irritates your airways, what allergies you might have, and make sure you try your best to avoid them. Brilliant. So a lot, a lot of people this time of year, they get their AC units uh, cleaned out and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's a great idea. I mean, the thing about AC units, it's kind of, it has a couple risks and hazards for a lot of people. One is the cold air starts to trigger their symptoms of shortness of breath and asthma. So Dr. Mohammed, tell me more about the experience here at this hospital. What is the differences between uh, your practices in other places uh, compared to here? Uh, I'll say Zahra is one of uh, really the best places I've worked in so far. You have kind of world-renowned doctors who work here um, with expertise in a variety of different fields, including medicine and surgery. And uh, they cover the vast spectrum of what people need in, in, in medical care. And there we go, some great tips and advice for a more happier and healthy lifestyle. Keep your lungs and your sleep in order. Take care. Big thanks to Lane for that report there. Let's stick with our medical theme because our guest co-host today is an integrative medicine specialist combining conventional but also nutritional medicine in her practices. A keen educator and a medical detective, no least. Please welcome Dr. Shafali Verma to the show. Thank you so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me. Great of you to agree to do this for us, especially as we're coming to that uh, crucial time of year where yeah, everyone's a little quick to celebrate at this time of year. And then, of course, it all changes on January. I was going to say January the 1st, but let's make it January the 2nd. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, where are you at? I'm, I'm interested when, 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 when we use the phrase medical detective. Are you a fan of the New Year resolution? I mean, it's difficult to say. To be honest, I'm not really a fan. I actually think people need to do things well as often as they can throughout consistency. I feel like that's the same thing where people are like eating really well during the week and at the weekend they do whatever they want. Yeah. That becomes consistent. So over time, that's kind of like how bad habits continuously happen. So no, I'm not really a fan. I mean, now in my late sort of like 40s, I feel like I did the resolutions and now I'm kind of like, no, I think we need to be a little bit more consistent. Yeah. I, I suppose it's been the thing with me is, is that why January? And I get it. I get it, the yeah. excesses of the holiday season, etc., and therefore to feel better about themselves. But then what's to stop you doing a resolution in February, March, April, May, June, or any other month of the year. And also, I don't think it lasts. It's normally January, February, March, and that, I mean, you sound like you it did amazing. It lasts, guys! Yeah. <laughs> it does for some, but for a lot, it doesn't. Uh, you know? I think that's what she was saying, because she was looking at me. Yeah. Said, it doesn't last, does it, Tom? Tom lasts two days. He's like, I think I'll do this. And then the next day, he goes, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, but he also talked about, like, things to like avoid and I don't think resolutions is always about avoiding it's about also doing things uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you know and changing sort of the narrative it being not negative but positive. Yeah. Um, well, I want to talk to you about integrated medicine and obviously I, I think our mental health is playing such a massive role in our physical health and that's something that we're appreciating more and more. I'm always concerned because I'm really high risk for breast cancer but I feel like these days it's I'm quite healthy I, I eat well I don't consume anything that's necessarily bad for your health. Um, but I am, I'm really bad when it comes to anxiety. I have a lot of anxiety and I do stress quite easily. How do you think that affects me overall? I mean, I think it does affect. I mean, one of the things that I did when I actually turned 40 was that I wanted to educate a lot more on stress management. Stress is common, but it's not normal, right? So it's like, if you have chronic stress, it actually has an effect on the body. It's not a social sort of status. You go around and people are like, I'm stressed and I'm stressed and I'm stressed and it's so common, but the body actually takes a beating. So I do think that if there's anything that I would have you work on, it would be that. You know, where is anxiety coming from? A lot of the times actually anxiety comes from the digestive system. Mm -hmm. That's actually where all your sort of neurotransmitters are, how you feel and things like that. And sometimes working on gut health actually promotes better 
ability to manage stress and anxiety, you know, and that could make a difference, a profound difference going forward, even in terms of all the other things related to like breast cancer. And you mean what you consume? When you're talking about no. gut, gut, when you're talking about gut health? It's actually the lining of the digestive system, how you absorb the food you eat, the trigger foods that you eat, you know, uh, bowel movements, you know, what is normal, what is optimal, you know, detoxification of hormones. I mean, the gut does so many things. It provides your immune system. Um, so it's actually looking at gut health and actually questioning that a little bit more, I would say. So let's say, for example, Dina's <laughs> New Year's resolution is to try and get her anxiety under wraps a little bit. What are the baby steps that she could start taking to kind of stop having those anxious waves and to kind of take control. So I'll for it, diagnose me. I'm, Let's yeah, do it. I love, I love this. <laughs> this is not like an online consultation, but I feel like one of the things that I would say is questioning when do you get it? Can we see patterns? You know, patterns over an extended period of time, like say a week or two weeks, we might be able to see correlations with certain things, you know, when it affects you. Does it happen more when you have like less sleep, quality of sleep? different types of food, you know, certain situations. And are those situations triggered by something else? So actually looking at sort of like, you know, I guess tra traumatic experiences up until now, they play a part um, hugely. Whether or not you have a, an outlet, you know, so be it, you know, do you have, do you, do you follow any sort of talk therapy? You know, whether it's like a therapist or do you have someone to chat to? Meditation, mindfulness. I mean, there's a lot of talk of that, but it is a practice. It doesn't happen like overnight. You know, do you do breath work? Uh, you know, you said you stopped coffee because it might potentially, you know, worse than we were saying that in the break, but like, you know, is that associated during a stressful situation already that you don't do well? Or, or does it always worsen it? There's a lot of things I think getting to know when and why and you know protocol can change patterns i think that's the first thing that i would probably say talking of patterns what about that age-old argument and you hear it from people either as an excuse or a, or, a, or a reason of it runs in the family it's in the genes etc as well i mean that you brought that up <laughs> because the one thing that i say is it really genetic so i know this is something that i say in clinic all the time your genetics loads the gun but your environment pulls the trigger. Yeah. So your genetics, is it genetics or is it tradition and culture that lead to the same lifestyle problems that create the same diseases? Mm. You know, is it, you, one has to question that. Can we break cycles? And if we break cycles, can we break tradition that leads to the same diseases? Yes. Mm. You know, you, you might have some genetic predisposition, mm -hmm. but the expression of that gene can actually be turned on and off depending mm. on what you do. And that's why lifestyle medicine is, I think, the future of medicine. That's why people are, you know, trying to like go on to Google and trying to like fix yeah. their own, you know, and Dr. Google has now become like the most famous doc doctor of all, is because they're searching and they're not necessarily uh, always going for, you know, what a diagnosis may be. Mm. Well, Dr. Shvai, we're so happy that you're going to be here with us because you're going to help us interview all our other fantastic guests today. So yeah. don't you go anywhere. Now, coming up, we are discussing women's health and managing PCOS symptoms with an expert. We discuss how to maintain your weight over the holidays. Ooh. Plus, we have a very talented artist performing for us tonight. You cannot miss her. She's amazing. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 